back in December 16th of 2000. Jerry Michael Williams, he goes as Mike Williams, he's an avid duck hunter. On this particular day, he went out and did that very thing. And at the time, he was married to Denise Williams. What you're going to hear is they never came back. In the afternoon hours, Florida Wildlife Commission are contacted as well as other family members and they start trying to figure out where he is. Within the first 30, 40 minutes, a number of uh, officers showed up. There was numerous uh, boats, uh, a helicopter, as well as friends and family looking as well. They found the, the hunting boat that Mike was in uh, and it had blown up against the, I guess, the west shore. And were you also aware of a vehicle that was found? Yes, it was Mike's Bronco. Out there every single day, helicopters, dive teams, every single day for two weeks. During that time period, they were not able to find Mike. Mr. Williams is still missing. And reality sets in that at this point has become a recovery operation. Six months afterwards, you're going to hear from Joe Sheffield, who is the person that goes out there and avidly fishes at that particular time of summer months now, and he comes up across a set of waders. In our little while, they had some algae and uh, settlements or whatever on these waders at that point. They're like pants. A man's jeans that come up above to his waist with suspenders over them. The waders were folded over and pulled down to the waist, like wrong side outwards up to that point. Up to the waist? Up to the waist. Not only were the waders found, but there was a jacket found and a hunting license. That hunting license belonged to Mike Williams. At that point, Mike still has not been recovered, and the case goes cold. Fast forward to 2003. Brian Winchester. Brian Winchester is a lifelong friend of Mike Williams. Following all of this, Brian and Denise, Mike's widow, are now starting to date. There are suspicions, and law enforcement takes another look. Please introduce yourself to the jurors. Brian Winchester. Mr. Winchester, do you know or did you know Mike Williams? Yes, sir. Um, prior to 2000, how did you know Mike Williams? Mike and I went to high school together and got to know each other very well. We were very good friends. Um, we continue to be friends all through college and all through uh, our marrying, getting married, and uh, we were we were very good friends. He prior was a very good friend. Prior to 2000, were you married? Yes, sir. And who were you married to? Kathy. Denise and Mike were high school sweethearts. My wife, Kathy, and I were high school sweethearts. We all uh, dated in high school and, and off and on through college. At some point, did you and Denise become an item, I guess, if you will, um, prior to 2000? Yes, sir. When was that? I mean, the date that we used was uh, October 13th, 1997. If I can back you up a little bit farther, if I can back to 1997, was there an occasion that you went out to a concert um, with Mike, Brian, Denise? Yes. Where was that concert at? Uh, at Floyd's on Tennessee Street. Uh, we pulled up on Tennessee Street. Denise and I jumped out of the car uh, and left Mike and Kathy to go park the car and uh, went down to the entrance of Floyd's and that was the first place that we like kissed each other and made out. Did something strike you as odd between uh, Brian Winchester and Denise? They were very friendly with each other. What do you mean by that? Um, very close, um, very touchy. 
Mike was there, was he not? Yes. Were they that way in front of him? Yes. After Kathy and I went home and Mike and Anise went home, um, she and I got on the phone together. And we basically spent the whole night talking to each other on the phone. And it was just like, I don't know, we just, we connected like nobody else. I mean, we just really connected and it snowballed really fast. We started meeting in hotels. We started meeting during the work day. You know, the more we were together, the more we wanted to be together. We eventually started talking about uh, options and ways that we could be together. Denise, because of the way she was raised, because of her pride, I, I guess I, I can't say all the reasons, but she did not want to get divorced. But she still had a desire for us to be together, which narrowed the options uh, even further, I guess. One of the options uh, was Mike and I going on a hunting trip together uh, and there being an accident where both he and I uh, ended up in the water and uh, he drowned and, and I did not. Denise liked this idea. We could feel better about ourselves if there was a, a chance that he could make it out of it, you know? I mean, I, I think there was even talk about, you know, well, it'll be up to God uh, what happens and not us. It won't be a murder. It'll be, you know, an accident. That was a scenario that she could live with, I guess. The plan was that uh, all this would occur very early in the morning and I would have time enough to get back and meet my father-in-law to actually go on a hunting trip with him. So that was going to be my cover, going to be my alibi. Her alibi was going to be that she was at home with Ansley. The plan with Mike was that I would meet him at a gas station and uh, I met him there. I had told him that uh, we were going to go to a secret special spot to go hunting and that he needed to bring his waders. A many a good man and woman's went to the bottom in a pair of waders. Why is that? Once you went over and water started getting in and most people panicked and beat around and pretty soon you full of water and you go to the bottom and that's it. With waders, there's a couple of things you've got to remember. Worry about staying calm getting a breath of air before you go down. Unflip your waders, go down and then start working them off. I told him something like, we're, you know, we're running late, you know, we need to go ahead and put our waders on, you know, here and now. So we both did that. There was a deep area. I, I basically stopped the boat and got him to, to stand up and when he did I pushed him into the water and he was like struggling what I came to find out or eventually realized was he was taking the waders and the jacket off that area of the lake had a lot of um, snags a lot of dead trees that come up out of the water and there's a lot of stumps that come up out of the water He swam over to one of those stumps and held on to it. And he was panicking and I was panicking. And none of this was like going how I thought it was gonna go. He was he started to yell. And so I had my gun in the boat. <laughs> and uh so I loaded my gun and I just, I made one or two circles around and I ended up circling closer towards him and he was in the water and as I passed by, I shot him. I knew I couldn't, I couldn't leave him there being shot. So I was gonna have to do something to cover this up. 
and ended up putting him in the back of my Suburban. And I pushed the boat back out into the water. Um, I sped back toward Tallahassee and I decided the best thing for me to do was to go back to my house. But I'd been thinking on the way from Lake Seminole back to Tallahassee, what, what was I gonna do with him? And I decided uh, on uh, an isolated uh, dirt road boat ramp uh, down at uh, Car Lake. Let's talk about life insurance policies. What is it that you did back uh, for a living back in 2000? Um, part of my job was to sell life insurance. Did you um, sell life insurance policies to Mike Williams? Yes, sir. There actually are three individual policies, one for $1 million, one for $500,000, and one for $250,000. The $1 million policy was actually written by Brian Winchester himself. It was within, I think, six months to a year before his death occurred. He eventually uh, decided, and I think with Denise's encouragement, decided to, uh, to go ahead and get that extra million dollar policy. The next thing, obviously, that we had to deal with was the fact that his body wasn't being found. Um, and so the concern between she and I then became, um, well, if his body's not found, what's going to happen with the life insurance? Certificate of death. A lot easier to get on a homicide, correct? Yes. Do you, it would be fair to say that when you have a homicide, you typically have a body. Correct. That would show the person is dead. Yes. In this particular case, we did not. We did not. A declaration or certificate for death in a missing person is a rare circumstance. Yes. In fact, you've never seen it. No. Um, so, in other words, Miss Williams took great length and went to great length and took a lot of steps in order to get this particular death certificate. Correct. And you can't get a life insurance payout for death unless you have a death certificate, correct? That's correct. Basically, she had to file a petition uh, with the court stating everything that happened, talking about what a wonderful marriage she had with Mike. There was no reason for him to run off on her, and it, it was granted, and she was issued a death certificate, so she was able to get the money. All of our conversations and planning and everything, I, I, I would say, is very mutual. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that... that uh, Denise planned everything and, and, you know, I was just a dumb guy who went along with what she wanted to do. I mean, I, I instigated a lot of it. I, I helped come up with ideas. I planned a lot of things. Um, but overall, it was very mutual. I mean, we wanted to be together. In October 2017, Brian Winchester gives a statement to law enforcement and he confesses to murdering Mike Williams. Brian Winchester took law enforcement out to the location and showed him where he'd been buried. In the end, the state is going to ask you to end the 21 years of sex, lies, and deceit. Brian Winchester's testimony is totally uncorroborated. There isn't anything to back it up. Brian Winchester's testimony is totally uncorroborated. Uh, in plain English, there isn't anything to back it up. You're not going to hear evidence from a witness who said that he or she saw Denise Williams participating in the, in the planning or the execution of this murder. You're not going to hear any witness talk about DNA evidence or fingerprint evidence. No confession no admission, nothing. Were you able to uncover any physical or tangible evidence that you feel connects Denise Williams to this murder? No tangible evidence, no, sir. Not until the um, arrest of Mr. Winchester. Well, I, I, I know what he told you. I'm not talking about what somebody told you. Sure, I'm talking okay. about physical evidence. No, sir. All you're going to have to go on is the word of the man who actually committed the murder. 
Did you enter into a proffer agreement with the state of Florida in October of 2017? Yes, sir. Did you enter into that agreement as it related to the underlying case of kidnapping Denise Williams at gunpoint? Yes, sir. You were in the middle of a divorce with Ms. Williams, weren't you? I believe she had filed at that point, yes, sir. Mrs. Williams did eventually marry Brian Winchester, but that was five years later, five years after her husband disappeared. Now that marriage didn't end well. And in 2015, Denise Williams filed for divorce. There were many, many efforts on the part of Brian Winchester to save his marriage with now Denise Williams. He couldn't do that. And I came a point in time where she wasn't speaking to him. So in a final desperate attempt to save his marriage, he decided that he would kidnap Mrs. Williams. This was an armed kidnapping that you'd planned for over a month? I thought about it for a month. You were very upset with Ms. Williams, weren't you? I was angry. You were angry because she was going forward with the divorce? I was angry for a lot of reasons besides that. He climbed into the back of her SUV, armed with a gun, waiting for her to get up to go to work. And then as she got in her vehicle to go to work, you crawled up over the back seat and shoved a gun into her ribs, didn't you? Um, I didn't shove a gun into her ribs. I didn't pull the gun out until later, and I had it at her side for 10 seconds tops. She didn't even know the gun was there until I told her later what it was. You had a gun? I had a gun. You didn't have a bouquet of flowers? Correct. You had a gun, a loaded handgun. Right. At some point, I calmed down and realized how ridiculous this whole situation was. Well, it was a little more than ridiculous. It was criminal, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And at some point on August 5th, 2016, to the best of your knowledge, Ms. Williams made contact with law enforcement and you were arrested that day. Yes, sir. And that is the last day that you have been a free man in the state of Florida, isn't it? Correct. He didn't mention anything about her alleged participation in this murder until after he realized that he was facing a life sentence for kidnapping. And at that point, he made an agreement with the state for immunity. You were granted immunity for killing Mike Williams, correct? I wasn't granted immunity for killing him. I was granted immunity for what I say in court. Do you believe that you can be prosecuted for killing Mike Williams? Yes, sir. You think you'll be prosecuted for that? I hope not. As a part of the proffer agreement in the kidnapping case where you held Denise Williams at gunpoint in her car, the state agreed not to seek a life sentence in that case. Isn't that true? They agreed not to seek a life sentence, but asked in court for me to get 45 years. So that's pretty much a life sentence in my opinion. You didn't straight away go to law enforcement and volunteer the details of the Mike Williams murder, did you? Absolutely not. You didn't want to go to prison. You didn't want to pay the consequences for what you had done, did you? Just like Denise, right. Okay. But you're also going to hear from law enforcement investigators who will tell you that they were not able to find any evidence of any affair. You can construct a whole narrative of where people, assuming they use credit cards, um, where they go, what they do, and where they go. In this day and age, you can do that, yes, well, sir. Well, let me ask you, you say this day and age. Was there not MasterCard and Visa and American Express in 1997? Yes, there were. Yes, sir. Did you, did you look and see if uh, Brian Winchester had one of those credit cards? Maybe some of the people before I had this case may have looked at Are it. you aware of anyone who looked at his credit cards? Not off the top of my head. So no, if sir. he used his credit cards to buy flowers for Denise Williams or something like that, you would have no idea. Yes, sir. If he used his credit card to pay for a hotel room, you would have no idea. I'm not sure the record keeping that would have been, you know, the same back then it is now. I have no idea. Well, let's let, let's let's go back to that. Are you saying that we didn't have Mastercard and American Express and we Visa did. cards in no, 1997? Sir. No, we did. We did. Yes. Sir. And we had subpoenas in 1997, did we not? We did. If he was courting Denise during that period of time. Someone could have maybe found some evidence of that. If, so, if subpoenas would have been issued, there's, there's a chance of that, yes. Sir. Okay. But as there is, there is no evidence of that other than what Brian Winchester says. Correct. Thank you. 
when you shot Mike Williams at Lake Seminole with the 12-gauge shotgun, was Denise Williams standing there with you? No, she wasn't. She was in my head behind me. She was in your head? Mm-hmm. Is it fair to say that over the years you've been obsessed with Denise Williams? Obsessed? Um, Denise and I were best friends. We were Bonnie and Clyde. We were partners in crime. Um, were we obsessed with each other? I'm not asking if she was obsessed with you. He's answering your question, I think, Mr. Blake. Let him, let him finish. Um, you, you, could, you could say that. I won't argue with you on that. Mr. Winchester has a motive to lie to you. He has a motive to make up this accusation against Mrs. Williams. You're going to have to rely entirely on the word of a murderer and a convicted felon. As the jury arrived at a verdict, would you hand it to the bailiff, please? State of Florida versus Denise Williams. We, the jury, find as follows as to count one of the indictment. The defendant is guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder. As to count two, we, the jury, find the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. We, the jury, find as follows as to count three of the indictment. The defendant is guilty of accessory after the fact of first degree murder. It's been dated and signed by the four person. Miss Idlett, did I accurately reflect the verdict? Thank you.